Hello all the crazy people out there, my name is Michael, I like wizards and dragons and making games, and it is time for another video about palette swapping and game makers. So last we left off, uh, we wrote a, uh, relatively simple shader, which allows us to essentially recreate, uh, pixelated Pope's retro palette swapper effect, uh, we're going to be, I usually call this method something like a, a palette search method for palette swapping, uh, we pass in a, um, a palette sprite to the shader, and then in the shader we're going to search through all the colors in the palette, and if we find a match, uh, we're going to uh, to replace the color with a uh, with a different palette index. If you have not seen that video yet, I would obviously recommend go watching it. I'll have a link to it on screen and in the description of the video. And uh, that works fine. This isn't the most efficient way of doing palette swapping, but if you have uh, small sprites or if you have sprites with only a few colors with small palettes, uh, then uh, you can generally get away with it without anything, uh, without any major performance costs. If you try to do this with larger sprites, or if you try to do this on sprites with a lot of colors, or um, perhaps even more so if you try to do this with a, uh, with a lot of sprites on screen at once, then the performance implications of this can start to add up. And if you think about this for long enough, you might start to wonder if instead of having to search for the color in the palette of what you're drawing in the fragment shader, uh, you might start to wonder if there's really a good way that we can... Uh, pre-search the palette or pre-process our sprites in some ways, uh, pre-compute the palette indices and send those to the shader for each color. And that's where index color comes in. So for some historical background, uh, index color is a, um, is a system of encoding colors in images that you might be familiar with from like the days of the NES or the Super NES or the Game Boy. Or... So in modern computer systems, uh, when you store an image, when you store image data, you're going to be storing for each pixel the red, green, blue, and sometimes transparency information for every uh, pixel in the image. Index color goes about this slightly differently, and it's going to store separately a, um, a palette image, something like this, uh, which has the, uh, a complete list of all the unique colors in the image. And then instead of storing individual red, green, blue, and alpha values for each pixel in the image, we're just going to store a single index, which is going to point to the color in the palette. It's going to point to the index in the palette, and it's going to assign that color as the color of the, of that pixel. So, it is worth pointing out that, regrettably, actual hardware support for index color has, by and large, gone the way of the 1990s. Hey. Um, you will still find index color in some image formats in the modern days. Uh, PNG, for example, allows you to store images as index color. Uh, animated GIFs, or if you like to pronounce it wrong, animated GIFs will still store pixel information as index color. You might have seen, for example, in a software such as a Sprite or Photoshop or most other image editing tools, um, options to uh, to encode sprites and in, in other images in either RGB color, which is like, you know, the default, uh, grayscale, which is self-explanatory, I think, uh, or as index color. Ultimately, though, this just relates to how the, uh, the image information is stored on the file. By the time it's loaded into the computer's memory and drawn on the screen, uh, it's going to be converted into RGB color. But... Even with all that considered, it is still pretty easy to imitate index color behavior in game engines like Game Maker, and uh, using that for palette swapping is going to be the subject of today's video. So, uh, I'm actually going to start with something something a little simpler. So I'm going to start with a, um, a palette that looks like this, and a sprite, an index sprite, which looks like this. So, perhaps a, uh, a way to visualize how this works is if you've ever played with like paint by numbers or anything like that when you were a kid, uh, you're basically doing uh, color indexing by hand, just instead of resolving an, an image in 16.6 .6 milliseconds, you're probably doing it in more like 16.6 .6 minutes. Uh, but anyway, in this example, the, um, the color black, pitch black, is going to correspond to uh, color index 0. 25% uh, gray is going to correspond to color index 1. 50% uh, gray is going to correspond to color index 2 and 75% gray is going to correspond to color index 3. So, uh, again, paint by numbers. Uh, I am going to, at least for uh, for starting out, I am going to put our sample palette, uh, our palette image on its own separate texture page again for basically the same reasons that I did at the beginning of the last video. The um, the regular image, the the sprite that we're actually going to be drawing is uh, is fine just on its own. It doesn't have to be on a separate texture page or anything. It can be if you want to, but there's no reason for it. Okay, before we get uh, into anything really complicated with uh, with index color here, let me draw a clear in the ducks uh, draw GUI event uh, C underscore white. So we're just going to do a little example here. 
with the um with the sample smiley face sprite uh, before doing anything really interesting. I'm going to draw sprite extended and let's draw uh, SPR sample um, index of image zero. X can be X, Y uh, scale. Let me draw this at 20X, maybe 24X. Uh, so that's so that it's a little bigger and easier to see. Uh, rotation can be zero. Uh, color C underscore Y alpha one. That's going to look something like this. Uh, we have ourselves a smiley face that walks around on the screen when I hit the arrow keys. That doesn't really, um, that's not too exciting. So, uh, let's go create ourselves a shader. Uh, let's call this SHD indexed color. Uh, I'm going to leave the, uh, the old, uh, what do I want to call this? Iterative search, uh, palette swapping shader. I'm going to leave this here, uh, for the time being. And, um... We can, uh, we can write another one specifically for index color. Don't care about the vertex shader. Uh, we're going to get rid of the vertex shader for now. Um, so as I mentioned, uh, the, uh, the color that's actually on the sprite that we're sampling from in um, the grayscale color that we're sampling, this is going to be, instead of a, uh, a color itself, uh, it's going to be a, uh, an index in the lookup palette, uh, an index in the sprites palette. I did go ahead and change the... Uh, the colors in this palette from what you saw a minute ago because I decided I didn't like them so I, I made them different. Um, feel free to try to guess what the sprite is going to look like when that palette is applied to it. Um, if we save this to a variable, let's call this uh, vec for index, uh, we can take the um, the color that you sample from the main texture uh, from the, uh, the index sprite is going to be a, a grayscale color and that is going to have its uh, red, green, and blue color channels all have the same value because that is how a grayscale color works. That's fine. I'm just going to save that as a VEC4 vec index anyway. I also am going to want a uniform sampler 2D. And we can call this uh, samp underscore palette. Um, and that is going to be the uh, that is going to be the palette that we're actually drawing the colors from. So if we just take like index.red uh, as, um, as our palette index here, uh, if we were to multiply this by, in our case, four, so if we were to multiply this by the total number of colors in the palette, then we would have our index zero for the first color, one for the second color, two, and so on. And if we were using, instead of a uh, instead of a palette texture, if we just had an array of colors, uh, we could use this as our, um, as our array index in our array of colors. Uh, we are not using an array of colors. We are using a texture sampler as our palette sprite. And uh, as it happens, uh, we actually are just going to not need to multiply index.red by anything because it's going to have a value between 0 and 1. Uh, UV coordinates are also going to have a value between 0 and 1. And if we wanted to extract a color from this palette, uh, all we would have to do would be to say texture 2D uh, from our sampler palette uh, with a vector 2 composed of index.red, and I'm just going to say 0 on the vertical axis. And we can set gl underscore frag color to uh, this, uh, the value that we're sampling off of the texture here. And that is all we actually really need to do for our rudimentary um, uh, index color lookup. So uh, what else am I going to need to set up before this is going to work? So I'm going to need to set the um, set the palette uh, as, our, uh, as our texture sampler. And I'm just going to go and cut this out because you've seen me write this out about 100 million times and you probably don't really need to see me do it again. Uh, we're also going to want to actually set our shader here. Probably should have done that first shader set that uh, before you um, before you try to set a uniform. Uh, we are going to shader reset when we're finished. And now if I were to run the game, uh, which if I've set everything up correctly, which I apparently um, okay, I um, when I re when I edited the sprite here, when I edited the SPR underscore sample palette. Um, I apparently forgot to put it on a separate texture page again. Let me try that again. All right, there we go. So we now have a black, uh, purple-ish and light green smiley face. That is going to be, uh, that is going to be our sprite using our index color palette here. This is like the third time I'm trying to record this video, by the way. There are some videos that just refuse to be made, and this is apparently one of them, which is a shame because I really like talking about index color, but... All right, whatever. So now that we've seen this little proof of concept working, I think I can get rid of all this stuff and we can actually go back to the uh, to the players, not step event, the players draw event. And we can um, 
we can make use of our index color uh, shader here instead of using the uh, the old iterative search palette swap. Um, I'm going to want to get rid of a, uh, uh, some of this code. Let's uh, set the shader to shader index color. Um, the palette size, the palette index, those can stay. The palette UVs, I am not going to in this video address dealing with the palette UVs uh, if you wanted to make this work with a texture, a palette texture that's not on its own separate texture page. Um, you totally can if you want. It's not difficult, but I spent like 10 minutes in the last video doing that, and I don't really want to spend 10 minutes in this video doing that too. So I'm just going to get rid of that. That can be your homework. Uh, let's take our um, our palette sampler. Um, samp uh, palette, I believe, is the name in this shader. Uh, if you were to just uh, if we were to just do this without dealing with the palette size or the palette index, let's see. So uh, the duck sprite. This is what it looks like regularly. This is its regular RGB. Um, its regular RGB like color representation. If I were to go ahead and import the uh, SPR Duckling index strip 16, uh, if I were to go ahead and import the index color version of the spray, and I'll get to generating index color palettes later on, um, it would look something like this. Uh, our um, our palette that we're going to be using is going to look something like, I, uh, I believe this is not actually it. What is it? Duckling palette. Let's import that one. Uh, let's make sure this is set to its own texture page. Indeed, uh, I've gone ahead. Oops, come back. This is going to be 32 colors. I think it's actually like 17 colors instead of 16 colors because there's one color in this palette that's like almost a duplicate, but not quite. Anyway, I've gone ahead and generated a couple of different alternate palettes for this thing. So we've got our original like yellow duck, which is probably the color you're used to ducks being uh, most of the time. We've got a green duck. We've got a blue duck, which I think was the example from the last video. And we've got a black duck with demonic red eyes, which is definitely a um, definitely a duck that exists in nature. And we can, um, if we've imported our, our duckling sprite uh, with our index color sprite, we can, um, we can just draw that as regular. Uh, when it comes to the palette that we're actually using, uh, SP or duck palette, okay, that's, uh, that's set to the correct value. Um, the, uh, the U underscore palette index, uh, I have not implemented that yet in the shader. I'll get to that after we see this working. And now we've got, um, with our, uh, with our index color, we've got a, uh, our duck sprite being drawn in color, but we're having some issues with the alpha, and that is because there's, um, there's a couple ways you can deal with alpha in, in index color sprites like this. Um, in the example at the beginning of the video, uh, with the, uh, the smiley face, alpha is encoded as part of the sprite's palette. So this, uh, this palette sprite, we've got black, purplish, and green, and the, uh, the first color in the, um, the first color in this palette is more or less a transparency color, and when you sample from that, you end up with a with a sprite with a um, with a pixel color of an alpha value of zero, and um, that's all right. That's a uh, that's a valid way of doing that. I believe that's how uh, index color would have worked in the um, like the old eight and sixteen bit console days. The color palettes of sprites would have the um, like the first color in the palette be reserved for transparency or or something like that. Um, you can do that if you'd like. I usually would prefer to, um, instead of doing it like that, uh, I would prefer to use the transparency value of the pixel that you're sampling. So in this duck sprite, we have transparent pixels in our, our, you know, our main image, our indexed image, as it were, around where the duck is. And when the, um, when the game maker asset compiler runs your game and exports your texture groups and stuff, uh, it'll turn those into black pixels, uh, red equals zero, green equals zero, blue equals zero with a, uh, with an alpha value of zero for basically compression reasons. And I think it would be a little more user friendly to just use those alpha values of those pixels instead of having to look them up in the um, in the palette. So when we set GL underscore frag color, let's say uh, vec4 sample color equals this, and GL underscore frag color can equal a vec4 composed of the sample color dot red, green, blue, and an alpha of index dot alpha like that. So we're going to take the color from the palette and the alpha from the uh, from the source image, from the indexed image. And now when we do that, uh, we are also going to have uh, transparency working as it is intended to. We've got a much simpler palette swapping shader here. Uh, this is three lines of code instead of whatever we had in the other version. Um, if you were to compensate for uh, UV coordinates, it might be something more like six or seven lines of code. That's all right. If you'd like, you can say, uh, you can do alpha testing, like if uh, the alpha value is less than like 0 0.1 discard or something like that. 
um, if you want to use this in 3D. Anyway, uh, what next? What else did I want to do? Right, the uh, the palette index and the palette size. So I'm going to um, I'm going to largely recycle the palette index uh, and palette size system from the um, from the last version. So we've got more than one um, oops, more than one color schemes being stored in this palette here. Uh, four different color schemes. Um, we are right now basically hard coding it to the first one. So if I were to instead uh, uniform float u underscore palette index and uniform float u underscore palette size, uh, we could, um, for our vertical texture coordinate when we sample from the palette, uh, we could do, I think this is more or less what we were doing last time, uh, pass that a value of u underscore palette index divided by u underscore palette size. Uh, you could pre-compute this in GML and just set that in GML as, as a single uniform instead of like doing the whole division thing in the shader, uh, if you'd like. But uh, again, that can be uh, that can be homework or something if you'd like. Let's uh, use the palette palette size and palette index uniforms here. Um, this will work pretty much as it did as it did before. So if I hit the space bar, we'll draw with one palette. Uh, we won't apparently. Oh, you know what? That's because here I have it as a, a vector two, and I only want it as a uh, as a single float here. Again, we don't need to make it that complicated if we don't want to. So original duck, green duck. Um, if you wanted to have a little bit more fun with this, let's go and um, give the duck a like palette index equals zero variable in the create event. Uh, in the draw event, we can say. Yes, you can make this a slightly simpler expression um, if you take that sort of thing as a personal challenge. Uh, let's see, let's set the palette index to just this uh, this variable that I've set here. Now when we hit the space bar, we'll cycle um, the duck palette instead of, instead of toggling. So yellow, green, blue, and demonic black with glowing red eyes. All right, I, I, think, that's a, I think that's a pretty good color scheme for a duck, actually. I'm going to see if I can talk Moonin into... Um, into rebranding Wizard X to, to use that. Uh, where were we? I think that's actually it uh, for right now. So obviously, the uh, the alternate animations like the duck casting animation or the duck running animation. What's the run button? Is a uh, shift. Um, this uh, these sprites, uh, these alternate duck sprites here, I didn't set up to use with uh, with the index color shader and. Consequently, if you try to use these with these uh, with this index color shader here, uh, unlike in the last video where you just would have been probably left with the original color if you didn't like set up a palette or anything, um, with this um, with this system, if you don't set up your sprites to use this beforehand, you'll get basically you'll you'll be sampling nonsense data from the palette when you try to do this. And while it's more efficient than the uh, the iterative search palette swapper, the, that's definitely a downside of having to of using this sort of system for uh, for palette swapping is that you do have to set up all your sprites to do this beforehand, and um, that can be a bit of a, uh, shall we say, that can be a bit of an inconvenience if you do a lot of stuff in the room editor and you have to get used to looking at in the game maker room editor things like, um, like the grayscale index color uh, versions of sprites instead of the regular RGB ones, which is the the color that you'll actually be seeing in the game, and. Um, Whenever we finally get IDE plugins in um, in Game Maker, I could see someone making a room editor plugin for uh, for that to allow you to actually draw the the palletized version of sprites like this. But that's uh, that's probably a long way off. Hey. So I said I'd talk about uh, generating the palette sprites for this. So uh, my go-to solution for this, and I know that there are other software that can do this, but my go-to solution for this is a, a little program I wrote myself, um, which is for. Um, a helper tool for my index color um, extension that I wrote for Game Maker some time ago. Uh, if I were to go and open Project in Explorer, and if I were to go and um, which one of these sprites is it? So like the the regular duckling sprite. Um, if I were to take the regular duckling sprite and uh, and drag it into here, um, we will we will import it into this into this palette extractor, and it will generate. A, um, an index color sprite uh, based on the palette of whatever you're uh, whatever you loaded in. Uh, it will also generate a palette over here on the side, and you will be able to uh, to look at the oops. Uh, you will be able to look at the um, all the individual colors in this image. Um, 
It's got a bit of a uh, it's got a bit of a fun tool built in, which allows you to also set the uh, set the colors uh, for a specific like part of the palette. Um, that might be uh, straying a bit far from the the original uh, purpose of this video, but um, I have fun with this certainly. And then from here, you can of course uh, save both the uh, the palette sprite and the um, the index color sprite of um, of whatever you've done. And again, I know that there are other uh, other programs out there that can do this. I believe A Sprite has some tools built in for for doing this sort of thing. But anyway, that's the one that I wrote a couple of years ago. We'll have a link to it and my my um, my palette swapping uh, shader extension down in the description of the video. Uh, it's basically this, if you feel like picking that apart and seeing how it works. But anyway, I think that's going to do it for now. I hope this recording comes out all right, because I really don't want to have to redo this whole thing again. Next time, I'm going to be diving into a uh, palette swapping system, which I actually haven't ever played around with, and I don't really know how it works. Uh, this is one that was written relatively recently by Juju Adams. In the next video, we're going to dive into this and see how it works. That should be a, uh, that should be a fun time. Lastly, before I go, uh, I would like to uh, call attention to this little, uh, perhaps a bit of an extreme example of things that you can do with palette swapping, but it is something that I think a, uh, a number of you would get some enjoyment out of. Uh, this is um, this is definitely a showcase more so of artistic uh, skill than technical skill. Uh, you could do this pretty much with nothing more than the code that we wrote in this video, but if you set up your, uh, your color palettes in a particular way, and if you set up your uh, palette indices in a particular way, uh, you can do some really cool, like, animations, uh, like this, uh, this big whole, like, animated landscape using nothing but index color and a couple of scrolling palette textures. Uh, this takes advantage of the fact that while probably most of the time one, uh, color in your image is going to correspond to exactly one index in the palette and one index in the palette is going to correspond to one color in your image, um, it doesn't have to be done that way necessarily. You could have one... You could have multiple uh, indices in your palette which which map to the same color, uh, and you could use those in ways that allow you to do things like um, animate images like this. Uh, there's a whole set of them. Uh, I think my favorite is probably this one, um, Jungle Waterfall. I uh, I really like this one, and there's a couple different uh, there's a couple different versions of it using different like palette schemes, and you can of course play with like the uh, the time of day slider if you'd like. Uh, there's a whole bunch of these. I'll have a link to this down in the description of the video as well. Uh, but I think that's I think that's everything. So, um, as usual, uh, if you want the code for this, look for the GitHub repository down in the description of the video. My name is Michael. I like wizards and dragons and making games. You should all go check out Wizard Arts in the Lost Hat, which is the game that I like to work on when I'm not doing YouTube stuff. Link to that can be found down below as well. And I will see you all later. Special thanks to Zenjamin, Vitro V, Square Crow, Spy Die Games, Manta Ray, Game Maker, Edward Holt, and DJ Gibbles for supporting these videos. If you want to contribute to the channel, head on over to the Patreon page down in the video description to join the fun.